here. Sorry, it's been a few days since I uh, put out a video. <coughs> and I'm sorry about any background noise. Um, it's raining and I'm on a rough road uh, when it's getting dark. Uh, so this couldn't wait. Um, and I'm probably going to skip around for a little while. But I got some really crazy stuff to talk about. I would say important, but I'm not sure if it's important to you guys. Um, and I'm probably going to jump around a little bit, but please stick with me till the end. Bear with me. There, you guys are going to think my tinfoil hat is on extremely tight. But I want you to hear me out here because there's a lot of weird shit going on. I mean, the weird shit is developing at an exponential rate. I mean, it has like exploded within the last week or two. It is absolutely insane, guys. And the reason why I haven't been reporting on the war, and we'll dive right into it, is because I have a conspiracy theory to, to throw at you. And again, take everything with a grain of salt. Nothing's been proven. But all signs point to everything I'm going to talk about today. As far as the war in Ukraine goes, uh, I think it's just a Broadway show, if you will. I think it's put on to distract us from what, from what is really going on. At this stage of the game, and I'll, I'll go into the details as to why I think this, but at this stage of the game, I feel like the U.S., China, North Korea... Uh, Taiwan, Russia, all these countries, I think they're in on this crap together. And this crap being population control. What their overall agenda is, I haven't really figured out yet. Like, why would they join forces? Well, you know, like, isn't there going to be, like, one major superpower? Like the U.S. is like top dog or Russia's top dog or whatever the case may be. I don't know, but I feel like they're brainstorming together. The U.S., Russia, China, North Korea. I feel like they're in on this whole population control agenda together. China's been doing it for years. The reason why I think this, guys, is because, A, the United States has supposedly crossed many, many red lines with Russia, but they haven't attacked yet. An aggressive-ass country like Russia has not attacked any part of NATO or the U.S. yet. Why? Not to mention... Russia has crossed many, many, many red lines with NATO in the U.S., yet no action has been taken yet. What if the pipelines being severed were for a reason? If you guys pay attention, there's still arteries open to where there's still trade happening between the U.S. and Russia, the U.S. and China. It's just not talked about. What if the internet cables, that those undersea water cables that were severed a while back, and it was all over the news, oh, you know, Russia's blaming the U.S. for severing them or cutting them, or what if it was done for a reason? Population control. What if this whole war thing is, like I said, a Broadway show to distract us from the real agenda, which is the 15-minute cities, which, by the way, China is the one that came up with that concept of the 15-minute cities. China's been doing shit like this for years. Now, the fires in Maui, I know, I know, everybody's going to say, oh, bullshit, you know, it's all, well, you guys that follow me may not. Because we seem to be on sort of the, the same, you know, brain wavelength here. But uh, the fires in Maui, it's really funny 
that anything metal, and I'm going to get to this here in a minute, like I said, I'm going to be jumping around a lot, so stick with me. The fires in Maui, uh, supposedly there's video of these lasers starting Maui on fire, which I'm inclined to believe. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. Um, but there's a certain area of Maui that is burnt exactly where they want it. It's the exact size, shape, and location that the government's been trying to take over for years, but the natives of Maui, uh, and uh, what's that city that actually burnt there? It's uh, uh, Lahanai or something. I know I'm going to jack that up, but they've been trying to take this over for years, but the natives have not wanted to give it up. So they burn them out. And the latest is, even the houses that survived, they're being evicted from. Why? And I'll tell you. If you look at a map, and if you're walking, not riding a bike, not in a car, not on a bus, but on foot walking from one end where the disaster started to the next end where the disaster ended, it's a 15 minute walk. <coughs> Why I'm inclined to believe that it was lasers that set this fire is because A, lasers react with metal more so than they do wood. So why are trees still standing? Why are cars melted into the road? It's going to take something way hotter than just a, your ordinary forest fire to melt a car into the concrete. Why is everything so secret of all of a sudden? Why won't they let anybody in there? Why is it barricaded off? Why are people being evicted? And if it wasn't a direct energy weapon that was fired on Lahanai, or however it's pronounced, that caused these fires. Why are trees still standing? Why is it anything in this specific color of blue, this shade of blue, light blue, why was that unaffected? Why is it that the military are now switching over to like, uh, this this specific shade of blue, this light blue color, as far as their roofs go, why are all the elites suddenly, I mean, this, this material was developed, I guess, just recently. Of course, it could have been around forever. It just hadn't been brought to light yet. But this new material you can put over your roof and it's supposed to protect you. So I, I was looking it up, guys. Lasers have a way of penetrating most all colors because I guess a laser is like a high intensity uh, wavelength that will, I guess it's like a color, color wavelength, something like that. And because it's like a high intensity colored wavelength, it will not burn certain things, certain colors. And a shade of light blue happens to be one of them. So, that's kind of suspicious. And I'm no doctor, I'm no expert, this is just a thought of my own. But people of Maui pretty much reported, you know, some of the survivors that are there, we don't, still don't know what happened to most of them. Uh, the ones that are missing. But a lot of them reported, some of the survivors, that it felt like they were burning from the inside out. Which is really strange. A lot of them jumped in the ocean to try to get rid of that burning feeling, but they still died anyway. Some of the survivors have had internal injuries no burn marks on the outside, but internal injuries. Now, what happens to a piece of tin foil if you stick it in the microwave? It sparks, it gets hot, it goes ape shit. 
because a microwave is a small version of a high energy device. Now, what was in the mandate a while back, those things that we had to get? There was a lot of metals. What are the, what's in that shit that they've been using the cloud seed to make it rain? Different types of microscopic metals. When they cloud seed, that loads our bodies. Our bodies are full of metals right now. Why do you think they basically pushed for the booster? And not just one booster, but several. Why do you think they're so hell bent on everybody taking the jab? Why do you think this jab is about ready to come back? Sorry guys, this weather cloud is catching my attention because it almost looks tornadic. Anyway, the fact that people reported a burning from the inside out is alarming. The fact that the government has admitted, even since 1986 or 76, 76 or 86, they've had high intensity, like high powered, radioactive, to, or not radioactive, but like radio wave style weapons, lasers and high frequency and, and microwave type style weapons. And these people were burning from the inside out. <coughs> Excuse me. Lots of reports of these people jumping in the ocean trying to get rid of that burning sensation. The area in Maui that burned, like I said, if you walk from one end to the other, walking at a normal pace, it's 15 minutes from one end to the other. They're trying like hell to build these 15 minute cities. And the other irony behind all this is if you look up most of the major wildfires here in the U.S. right now, Those are the exact locations of these cities and states that uh, they've talked about 15 minute cities. Nobody's gonna give up their land willingly, but if it's desolate, if it's all burned out, well, they can just buy it up and rehouse these people. Now, with that being said, with these 15 minute cities being built and I, I can almost guarantee they're going to be built and they're probably going to be built with a quickness now what's coming up guys what's coming up real soon here in November it's going to be the 2024 election now I want you to follow me on this keep in mind everything I've talked about If war is declared just before the 2024 elections, either the U.S. declares war on Russia or China or vice versa, China and Russia, China or Russia declares war on the U.S., well then, uh, the War Powers Act can be or enacted, meaning that any election that's about to take place is put on hold. The reason why it's put on hold is because the current president isn't going to have time, so to speak, to go over details to transfer power to another president. So until the war is over, how the War Powers Act is, or is enacted, everything's put off. So if war is declared, the War Power Act will be enabled or enacted. Soon thereafter, I bet you martial law is going to be enacted. And if I was a betting man, I'm really thinking something bad is going to happen to number 46. But they're going to wait 
until some of these 15 minute cities are built because anybody and everybody that starts a civil war against the government once something bad happens to number 46 or not 46 but number 45 you guys know who I'm talking about uh, tan man our last commander in chief. Something bad is going to happen to him. And uh, there's probably going to be a lot of rioting in the streets. A lot of civil unrest. A lot of civil war. A lot of really pissed off people. What do you think is going to happen to those people, guys? They're going to be moved to these concentration camps. I mean, 15 minute cities. Think about it. Not only that, guys, but I just got wind just before I started making this video that because the BRICS have come together and added more people to the BRICS nation over in Russia, or, you know, part of Russia, they're, they're like buddy-buddy now, whatever, that one dollar of their money now equals like fifty dollars of our money. So what's happening, guys? Our money is going away. They've already got these devices in place in uh, New York to where, you know, you got to put your hand over the thing and you pay for your shit. Um, we've talked before about the social credit score to where if, you know, the chip in the hand is mandated, the mark of the beast is your account number, you know, you're going to be able to start your car with that chip in your hand. Hold on, guys. I got to plug in my phone. Tell me battery's low. Just a minute here. Shit's gonna get hairy while I plug in my phone. Think we're good now? Anyway, so, they're gonna go to a central bank digital currency. Now this is another reason why I think that this is a Broadway show. This war is a Broadway show put on to distract us from what's really taking place. I think the U.S., NATO, China, Russia, I think they're joining forces and they're going to be trying to become one nation. It isn't going to, or, you know, one large country, one globe, that's it. Partners, you know, the elites, the rich of the rich, and all of us little peasants are going to be the slaves. Because it's going to go to a central bank digital currency, a one currency system throughout the globe. You don't have that chip in your hand. You're not going to be able to unlock your car. You're not going to be able to access your bank account, your house. You're not going to be able to buy food. You're not going to be able to buy, uh, to buy gas, clothing, nothing. So basically, if you refuse that chip in your hand, you're an outsider. You're you know, you're outcast. You're an outsider. You're, you're like uh, you're like one of these uh, squatters or, or whatever those people were called in the Mad Max movies. Um, the outsiders, I guess, if you will. You won't be able to do anything. Anything you do is going to be fending for yourself off the land. And that's if they don't kill you off for being a scavenger or whatever the case may be, is everybody else is living happy in these little 15 minute cities. But either way, that chip in your hand is gonna be based on a social credit score. If you've eaten too meat, they can shut you down. Yeah, that chip, people think it's a good idea. Oh, it's linked to my bank account. That's how I pay for shit. But you're gonna be tracked, you're gonna be monitored. And if you've eaten too much meat, they're gonna shut your, uh, uh, chip off. You're not going to be able to buy meat. It's going to recognize what you're buying. If you've driven too much, if you've purchased too much gas, or maybe have used too much electricity to charge your EV, well, they're going to shut you down. They're going to totally lock you out of your account. You're going to be basically a slave to the government and to be, be dependent on them. I mean, am I really that far out there, guys? I feel like I'm a freaking lunatic. 
the all signs are pointing to it. Everybody's talking about it. I can't scroll through anywhere without somebody talking about, and not just a one somebody or just a couple. I mean, on my days off from work, I'm sitting there scrolling at the end of the night, you know, just kicking back and relaxing. I'm scrolling across hundreds of different channels, hundreds of different people talking about the same stuff. It's going to be a, the whole world, the whole globe, that's going to be a Nazi Germany to where the elites control your every movement. You're not going to be able to move without your papers, the chip in your hand. Hell, they might even tattoo a barcode on your neck. Who knows at this point? But their main agenda right now, guys, is population control. Why do you think they wanted you to take the thing? Metals are being introduced into your body. Nanotechnology. Let's get into nanotechnology real quick. Did you know it only takes 14 gigahertz to like 27 gigahertz to get those nanoparticles to align and to do cell damage to the human body? Now you might be asking, okay, so what? Big deal. What's going to control those nanoparticles? What do they have in place to do so? Did you know that 5G cell phone towers could put out anywhere from 27 to like 40 something gigahertz? That's more than plenty to control the nanotechnology. And from what I understand, from the shit that I'm hearing, it's supposed to be three quick bursts lasting only a minute, only one minute long. Three quick bursts within that one minute, only lasting up to a minute. Not each time, but just in total. And that's supposed to align these nanoparticles, which in return are going to destroy cell dam, or you know, destroy cells and do cell damage. Essentially, it's going to kill you. There's like eight million people around the globe, or some shit like that. Maybe more, I don't know. Or no, eight eight billion, and they're trying to get it down to five hundred million. You don't know what I'm talking about, go look up the Georgia Guidestones and what they said about population and the environment and, you know, like natural resources, the, you know, the woodlands and there's some scary shit, guys. You guys might think I'm out there, but uh, pay attention to that, would you? Just pay attention. Let's see if we actually have a 2024 election. Like, I almost don't want to make a video until the elections approach. Because I'm really curious to see what's going to happen. Are they going to declare war? And if they do, is the War Powers Act going to be enacted? Are they going to put off the election? Is Biden going to remain in office? Another theory of mine, too... It's because they're trying to impeach Joe Biden, and apparently it already has passed the House, uh, and it's gone to the Senate. If it passes the Senate, what if war is declared, uh, declared before his hearing, his impeachment hearings? If war is declared just before his impeachment hearings, and the War Powers Act is enacted, Guess what? It all goes away. Well, it doesn't really go away, but it goes on the back burner. There's way too much fishy shit going on in this world right now, in this country. And I don't trust a damn bit of it, guys. That seriously looks like a tornado over there. There's no rotation, but there is a sharp dip out of the clouds, and it is raining like hell over there.
You can see the streaks coming out of the sky. Not to mention, but they're uh, speaking of the, the storm, as a matter of fact, Biden was caught saying that uh, something about they're, they're controlling the, the weather and there, there's supposed to be more violent weather outbreaks that he's going to ramp it up and make sure there's more violent weather. How is he going to make sure if they can't control the weather? They've already been doing it, guys. Michigan the other day just had several tornadoes outbreak at the same time. With all the different places that were hit here in Michigan, and we don't get tornadoes, guys. Very, very seldom. And if we do, it's hard for them to label them tornadoes as opposed to, like, high-strength, straight-line winds. But there was several tornadoes that touched down because I'm a truck driver and I drove through the path. Now, there's one tornado that went through Grand Rapids, uh, Portland, Ionia, Lansing, and these are all little cities, in, well, not little cities, but cities in Michigan that run along the 96 uh, highway, east to west. But then there was also a couple spotted, you know, lighter ones up in Saginaw, and there was one north of me, uh, north of Muskegon somewhere. There, and there's a couple other reports of some other touchdowns also. So there was several tornadoes that touched down. Michigan ain't never seen nothing like that. But since they've been playing with the weather, cloud seeding, the jet streams all jacked up, places that never used to get snow are getting snow, places that are getting tornadoes never used to have tornadoes. Places that used to be hot this time of year are getting snow and vice versa. Places that used to get snow this time of year are hot. And I've gone back through history and looked and I've tried to research. There is some evidence that a little bit of this took place, but it is way out of the ordinary this time around, this year. It is way out of the ordinary. You guys can't possibly tell me that all this is a coincidence. And if you guys think I'm full of shit as far as the high energy weapons go in uh, Maui, the lasers, the microwaves, whatever the hell it was that they used, why is it that everything that is that particular color shade of blue, why is it none of that shit burned? Why are cars melted into the road? fire was so hot it literally created a molten river of metal running away from these cars but the trees were undamaged certain blue structures blue items dumpsters uh, like blue garbage cans and shit like that are you telling me these fires were so damn hot that they created a molten river of metal from these cars in Maui, but they didn't melt a freaking rubber made trash can that was 10 feet away? Come on now. You guys, we're at 30 minutes. I basically got out of me. I'm pretty sure there's something else I was wanting to talk about. It's time to get stocked up. Do not take the mark of the beast. Do not do it. Learn how to survive on your own without any assistance. Something really scary is coming, guys. And, like, I don't know exactly how it's going to all unfold. Something extremely out of the ordinary and it started with the 20 uh, the 2020 elections it started then might have started in 08 when Obama got in 08 or 12 I'm not sure but most definitely in 2020 the weird out of the ordinary just 
the weird shit has has started. I can't wrap my head around it, but more and more stuff every day is coming to light, guys. I mean, I just... Please, y'all, just leave it in the comments below. Am I batshit crazy? Like, have I totally fucking lost it? I don't know. I, I, I feel... Like I'm, like I'm talking fucking pure insanity here. But so is hundreds of thousands of other people are talking the same thing. No, I didn't drink the Kool-Aid. I just look at what's going on. You know, if you put a 2 plus 2 on the chalkboard, I know to add it to 4. Two plus two is being put up all over. There's definite signs of shit going on, guys. Get stocked up. And don't fall for the government bullshit. If they say your only hope to access your car, your bank account, to buy food, to buy gas, to buy clothes, is to insert that chip into your hand, pack what you can, as, as hard as it may be, Leave all that shit behind. Your house, your car, your cell phone. Fuck, at this point, leave your wallet, leave your ID, leave your social security card, because it's not going to matter. Get the hell out of Dodge. Get deep in some forest land. Never show your face again. Hide out, live out the rest of your life. When you die, have somebody from the group area right there where you sit. I don't know guys, there is some weird shit going on in this country, but I'm going to leave you here. We're at uh, 32 minutes on the clock, by the time I edit this, probably 33, 34 minutes. I love y'all, let me know if I'm crazy as shit or what. Keep your heads on a swivel and get stocked up guys. Till next time, I love y'all, Michigan prepared out.